Congratulations on buying your wheeled shovel model from Structured Solutions 2, the safest and fastest snow shovels in the world. Our wheeled shovels can remove snow over two feet high and can clear snow two to three times faster than shoveling with a fraction of the effort. They can even outperform most snow blowers and they use no gas. Please take the time to watch the entire video. You'll find the assembly and setup tips towards the end. And remember, not all the images in this video are of your model wheeled snow shovel. This video covers all models. SW0107, W0208, SW0208, AW2012, and model SW0310, which should be indicated on the product label or can be readily identified visually most easily by noting how the upper and lower frames are connected in this guide. We sometimes get the question of why the shovel blade is made from molded polypropylene plastic and not metal. The blade needs to withstand hundreds of pounds of force from pushing with your body and needs to bend and flex if you hit curbs, edges, or other hidden objects, yet still be light enough to make snow throwing efficient. Also, Plastic glides with less friction and drag, while reducing snow sticking to the blade. Throwing snow with the wheeled snow shovel. A quick lesson. We are often asked, why is the wheel so large, and will it work for me? The large wheel enables you to travel over curbs, steps, or other obstructions with ease, as well as lift, carry, and most importantly, throw snow even in very deep and heavy conditions. The wheeled snow shovel works like a big seesaw, where you use your body weight and legs to push and throw, instead of just your arms and lower back. As with many sports, a good throw needs a good follow-through and a good wrist nap. The same is true with your new wheeled snow shovel. Throwing snow far and high doesn't take a lot of effort. In fact, with some practice, you will find it's easy to do. Try it first without any snow, standing still so you can get used to the wheeled snow shovel. Hold the handle at its widest points and make sure you have the handle height set just below your chest. Then, snap your arms and hands straight down. Try this several times with an empty blade until you can get the wheel to jump or recoil off the ground. Then, try it with a bit of snow on the blade or if it hasn't snowed yet, any object can work. The snow should come off the blade mostly straight up. Remember, don't push forward with your hands to throw. Just snap the handle straight down. Keeping your back straight, move forward pushing your wheeled snow shovel and take a step forward as you start your throw. And again, snap the handle straight down while stepping forward in one smooth motion. Try not to come to a stop before throwing. The higher and farther you want to throw the snow, the more you'll need a bigger and deeper lunging step as you snap the handle downwards. The same is true with heavier snow. And remember, always keep your body and back straight. Remember, just snap the handle straight down. Don't push forward with your hands to throw. Tips for learning to use your wheeled snow shovel. Unlike regular shoveling, your wheeled snow shovel is designed to use leverage to lift, carry, and throw snow forward. Don't try to throw snow by tipping the wheeled snow shovel to the sides. You should use your wheeled snow shovel as a plow as much as possible to move most of the snow. Because the wheel bears most of the weight, you can move a great deal of snow with the oversized blade, even more snow than actually fits on the blade. As the blade fills, lean down on the handle to take weight off the blade so it doesn't drag on the ground. That way, you don't have to lift snow if you don't need to. Push the snow, then lift it and drop or throw it only when you reach the edge of the space you're clearing, where you want to pile the snow. To do this and clear fast and efficiently, you'll need to plan the best pattern or order of snow removal. Unlike with regular shoveling, what order you clear snow in will affect how quickly and easily the job will go. Here are a few examples. 
for a wide driveway or parking area, with light snow clear from side to side. However, in light conditions, the order of clearing is less important. For heavy snow, clear the outer edges first so that the interior areas can be cleared without lifting and carrying the snow on the shovel blade. Start by clearing some shorter sections of the large surface, starting at any corner. After you have cleared some areas near the edges on both sides of the driveway, then clear the center section, pushing the snow from the center over the now cleared perimeter. This way, you can keep the blade on the ground and clear snow more quickly, throwing the snow only when you reach the edges. You may prefer to take full runs with only half the blade in the uncleared snow. This also allows you to keep moving and keep the blade on the ground. Just experiment and be creative. While the wheeled snow shovel can handle over two feet of snow, you may find it quicker to clear large spaces halfway through a heavy storm. If you have a one or two car wide driveway and on one side you can't or don't want to pile up the snow, then push the snow in diagonal passes across the driveway. Then back up and start a new pass, clearing in the same direction. If your driveway is on a hill, Always start at the top and clear diagonally across the hill, moving down and across. If the snow is heavier, we again suggest a similar approach, but clear less than a blade's width of snow in each pass. But again, first clearing the perimeter and areas closest to where you will throw or pile the snow. If you have clear space on both sides of a narrow driveway, you might try clearing back and forth across the driveway. Though remember, always work downhill if you can. Lastly, for very large areas in heavy snow, it is even more important to clear the perimeter snow first. Remember, until the piles get big, a small downward push while still moving forward and keeping your back straight is all that is needed to remove the snow from the blade. Take some time and experiment to find techniques that work best for you. When clearing pathways, fill the blade with the snow. Then continue moving forward, but make a slight turn to either side. Keep the wheeled snow shovel mostly upright, like you would to make a small turn on a bicycle. Simply throw at a slight angle to one side or the other. Generally, you do not need to throw the snow very high. And remember, no tipping. Assembly Tips for the Arctic Wolf, model AW2012. Install the shovel blade on the metal J-shaped frame. Make sure that the J-frame is oriented correctly on the back of the shovel blade and not reversed. Install the J-frame into the middle frame and be sure to install the two carriage bolts through the square hole side first. Tighten the two nuts using a socket wrench, box wrench, or pliers. To install the handlebar grips, put a drop of liquid soap on each side of the handlebars first. This helps when you slide on the handlebar grips. Insert the T-frame or handlebars into the middle frame. Insert the two carriage bolts through the long slot. and install one plastic T-nut on each. Make sure the bolts are inserted through the smooth slot and the T-nuts are attached on the side with the beaded slot. Set the handle height to what is comfortable for you, but notice that each bolt and T-nut align with one of the round sections of the beaded slot. Then tighten the T-nuts by hand only until it's snug. When you change the handle height, loosen both T-nuts slightly and slide the handle to the desired height. You may want to remove one bolt and slide the handle further before reinserting the second bolt and retightening the T-nuts. Generally, a good height is just below chest level. 
but select a height that is comfortable for you. And in heavier snow, you may want to lower the handle a little bit. Lastly, insert the axle through the hub of the wheel and then through the frame before clipping it in place with the hitch pin. When the wheel is installed correctly, it should be centered on the shovel blade. If you lose the pin, some stiff wire or a small bent nail can work in its place. Inflate the tire and you are ready to go. The tire does not need high pressure and really works best with 15 to 20 pounds of air pressure. The Arctic Wolf is almost maintenance free. For compact storage, you can remove the wheel and handle frame section very quickly to store in about the same space as most shovels. General Assembly and Setup Tips We won't cover the full assembly instructions here, just some helpful tips. If you lose your printed instructions, they can be downloaded from our website for all models at www.snowwolf.com. The wheeled snow shovel frames and handles are constructed of heavy gauge powder coated steel. The wheel and blade are made of tough, flexible and lightweight injection molded plastic. This helps to reduce friction and wet snow won't stick to it like it does to metal. If it does, just give it a shot of silicone or a non-stick cooking spray. Our wheeled snow shovels are designed so that all the bolts are inserted through a square hole. If you hold the bolt in place with one hand, the nut can be tightened from the other side with just a hand tool, a pair of pliers, wrench or socket set. Some use only a 7 16 inch or 11 millimeter wrench or socket. Here we have the wheel and tire assembly. Starting with the two wheel halves, slide them together fully. You'll notice that there are four bolt holes around the center hub and two bolt holes on each of the two opposite sides where the halves meet. Start with the four bolts on the center hub, push the short bolts through, then secure a nut on each and tighten. Then on the outer edge side that does not have the four hinge tabs, install the two bolts and nuts. Now we are ready to install the tire. The two bolts to secure the two halves of the wheel should not yet be installed as these hinge tabs secure the tire ends and the wheel halves at the same time. Line up the end of the tire where the wheel halves meet and snap or press the end onto the spine on the outer edge of the wheel. Then swing one of the tabs up into place into the notch in the tire. Then the second one and squeeze together to fully seat them. Then install the bolt and secure and tighten the nut on the other side. If they appear short, you may have to squeeze the tabs to fully seat them before installing the bolts. Now, with the end of the tire secured, begin installing the rest of the tire, stretching it gently as you install it around the wheel. Stretch a small section and press it onto the wheel spine, then stretch the next section and press it on. Remember to install the tire at room temperature when it stretches more easily. You won't harm the tire by stretching it too much or too little. For example, if you have stretched the tire too much and it is a bit too long, simply peel off maybe one half or less of the installed tire and stretch it less when you reinstall it so that the ends are touching when fully installed. Then press the ends of the tire down so they are fully seated. If you have stretched the tire too much, you can also try peeling off a bit, then secure the end and work away from the attached end pressing the tire onto the wheel until the extra tire slack is taken up. Now fold the last two plastic tabs into place to lock into the two notches in the ends of the tire and install the last two bolts and nuts with a socket, pliers or wrench. If the tire is short, you have not stretched it enough. Peel off one quarter or more of the installed tire and then reinstall it, stretching it a bit more as you install it this time until the ends meet tightly. The tire is very stretchy and tough, so it is difficult to damage by stretching it. You can stretch it quite a bit and it will retract back. Just make sure that the ends meet at the wheel joint and fit tightly before swinging or placing the tabs into place and securing with the bolt and nut. Although unlikely, if you are installing the tire and notice that one of the tabs is missing, it is likely it was roughly handled during delivery or shipping and the tab became detached. It's probably in the bottom of the box. The tabs are secured by a thin piece of plastic to allow them to fold and are attached mostly 
to show more easily how they fit when folded into place. So there is no functional problem if one did detach. Merely take the loose tab and fit it into place to secure the tire and secure the bolt and nut. The tabs are secured by a thin film of plastic which allows them to fold into place in the notch in the tire. You may find it a bit easier to fit them into place if they are detached or torn off. So if you like, just tear the tab off and fit them into place before installing the bolt and nut. Some customers report they find it easier to install the tire by securing the ends first, then fitting the tire onto the spine or barb. So if you have any trouble installing the tire, then maybe try securing the ends of the tire in the same way, but just leave the rest of the tire loose until you have the ends secure. Then just start at one end and work around the rim installing the tire, still stretching it a bit as you work your way around. Assembly and setup tips for the single-framed wheeled shovels, including the Snow Wolf, and Wubble Models SW0107, W0208, SW0208, AW2012, and model SW0310. The handlebar is inserted through the upper frame and secured in place with the silver bolt using a wrench, socket, or pliers. The grips are installed only after the handlebar is installed and secured. Apply a drop or two of liquid soap to the inside of the grips to help them slide on more easily. When installing the hinge link to the upper frame, you should see that there are extra holes available, so the hinge link can be installed in either of two positions, depending on how tall you are. If you are under 5 feet 7 inches, or 170 centimeters, then overlap the upper frame further into the hinge link and install the two nuts and bolts as shown. If you are over 5 feet 7 inches or 170 centimeters, then overlap the upper frame less into the hinge link and install the two bolts and nuts as shown. Once a hinge link is attached to each the upper and lower frames, fit the two hinge link connectors so that you can insert the axle tube through the large holes in each hinge link to connect the two frame assemblies and install the retaining clip in the hole near the end of the axle tube temporarily to keep the tube in place. Now, pivot the two frame assemblies in order to align any one of the three grouped smaller holes in each hinge link and insert the hinge link release pin, as shown, and secure it with its own clip. By unclipping, then removing this hinge link release pin, the frame can adjust handle heights and fold in half easily for storage. With the hinge link release pin out, the frames can be adjusted or moved to align a different set of holes in the hinge links so that a different handle height can be set. Then the hinge link release pin is reinserted and secured. Each of the three handle height settings correspond with a different set of holes in the hinge links. If you are under 5 feet 4 inches tall, you might try the lowest setting. For under 5 feet 7 inches, you might try the middle setting. And if you are over 5 feet 7 inches, you might try the highest setting. With either the hinge link release pin or the axle removed, the entire frame can also be folded in half for even easier storage, and it even fits on a shelf. Or if you prefer, you can separate the upper and lower frames completely by removing both the hinge link pin and axle. If your wheeled shovel is a single frame model, where the wheel is mounted on the side of the single main body frame. Both the shovel blade and main frame sections are assembled with the same 1 and 3 quarter inch length bolts and keps nuts using a 7 16 or 11 millimeter socket or wrench. SW0107 The main adjustment for the handle height is in the frame connector or bracket. The end of the upper frame tube is secured to the frame connector with two bolts the lower bolt through either of the two holes pictured. Each hole corresponds to a different handle height. The higher handle setting corresponds to the lower hole, and the lower bolt corresponds to the higher handle setting. If you are over 5 feet 7 inches, you might try the higher handle setting. 
Separate from the handle height setting just discussed, there is a handle length adjustment depending on which set of holes are used to attach the two handles to the upper frame. In most cases, the shorter handle length setting will work best with the lower handle setting just discussed. And the longer handle setting should work best with the higher handle setting. The longer handle setting will also raise the handle height a bit. So experiment with which combination is most comfortable and works best for you. Though if you are over six feet, you should set the handle in its extended longer position. Remember to tighten up the handle nuts periodically to ensure the handle is securely attached to the upper frame. If the nuts are not sufficiently tight, the bolts could be damaged. The wheel installs and is removed from the axle merely by removing the retaining clip from the end of the axle and then removing the wheel. When reattaching the wheel, remember to insert the retaining clip to ensure the wheel is secured. If you ever lose a retainer clip, a piece of heavy wire can be used temporarily, but this type of clip or pin should be available at most hardware stores. Wheeled Snow Shovel Accessories Accessories for the wheeled snow shovels are available separately. Here are a few that might make your snow removal even more enjoyable. There is a wear strip that extends the shovel blade life and can help clearing harder packed snow. However, the shovel blade is replaceable, but some users prefer to use the wear strip. Gravel wheels are designed to attach under the shovel blade and keep it just off the gravel or stone so you can clear snow without digging into or damaging the gravel surface. The chipper plate is designed to help chip away hard packed snow and icy patches. Generally, you would not use the gravel wheels and chipper plate together. Note that the gravel wheels and chipper plate should not both be used at the same time as the wheels are designed to keep the blade off the ground, preventing the chipper plate from proper functioning. Storage Tips For easy long-term storage, loosen the axle knobs and remove the wheel and either hang or lean your wheeled snow shovel on the wall. For other models, the wheel can be pulled or slid off the axle after removing the retaining clip from the end of the axle. For summer or long-term storage, the single frame units can be broken down by removing the two bolts securing the upper frame or the lower frame, and the frame halves can then be stored on a shelf very compactly. For temporary storage, you can leave the wheel on and merely tip your wheeled snow shovel up on the shovel blade edge and lean it against the wall. Or you can just leave your wheeled snow shovel upright and dug into a snow bank to prevent it from tipping over. Maintenance. The wheeled snow shovel is designed to be virtually maintenance free. Every few years or so with a lot of snow, you may need to replace the blade if it shows excessive wear. If the blade warps from long-term storage problems, Take the wheel off, lie the wheeled snow shovel face down flat on the ground and place a heavy weight on the blade so the blade is held flat for a few days to a week. Optionally, you can spray the nuts and bolts with silicon spray to further protect from minor rusting. Again, congratulations on buying the safest and fastest snow shovel in the world. If you happen to make the news using your Wovel or Snow Wolf wheeled snow shovel, Send us a copy of the coverage, and you can earn credits towards future web purchases of Wovel or Snow Wolf wheeled snow shovels or accessories. Our contact information, warranty, full instructions, and updated helpful tips can always be found on our webpage at www.snowwolf.com. Send us your tips, pictures, and stories. We would love to hear from you.